Welcome to Turn the Page, the official podcast of the Syosset Public Library. Welcome to Turn the Page. You're here with Stacy, Evelyn, and, and Nicola. And we're here to discuss she is a debut author with her book, Bond Talk, and she was just here at the library for an author visit, and we're here to talk more about her book and her writing life. The book is called Montauk. Why Montauk? Yeah, well, thanks so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Um, so Montauk uh, started because I used to have a house out in Montauk, and um, back in... I think this was 2006 or 2007, we got a house and we bought it from someone who was a local lobster fisherman named Billy. And he and his family were um, moving out of the area. You know, Montauk property prices were going up and so he moved his family down to Florida. And, you know, we'd go into town and we'd go to the, you know, fish market and the grocery store and the liquor store and people would we'd introduce ourselves as the newcomers and they'd say, oh... I know you guys. Or I know, sorry, I'd say um, I know that house. You guys live in Billy's house, and um, it, you know everyone would go. They say, "Oh yeah, you live in Billy's house." And for years, you know, we lived in Billy's house. So I just really liked that sense of you know community and the strong sense of loyalty, and that sort of sparked an idea in my mind. But you took it back to 1938, not local, not current <laughs> time, present time, <laughs> present, time. <laughs> present time. Yeah, yeah. So I. Um, I just kind of was nostalgic for this uh, fishing village and what it was like back then. You know, Montauk has changed so much over the years. Um, you I've seen a lot of the mom and pop shops, you know, leave town, and it's still just so beautiful and so fun to go out there. But I have seen it change a lot. So I wanted to go, like, go way back when it first started and imagine what it was like then and what it was like when people first started going out there to visit Montauk. So when they first started having Montauk, was it just mostly they had, like, the locals who were there year-round and then the rich summer people come in? Yes. Yeah, so it, you know, was a really sleepy little fishing village and um, really great for deep-sea fishing because they had the access to the Atlantic right there. And so um, year-round, for, for most of the year, it was those locals. And then um, this uh, guy, Carl Fisher, who he's, he's – Carl Fisher was um, – the most influential person in developing Montauk in the 20s and uh, the 20s and 30s. And um, he originally developed Miami and then he set his eyes on Montauk and turned it into this resort town. And so a lot of like the wealthy New Yorkers would start going out to Montauk and, uh, and, and visiting. It's definitely interesting because I'm out of the two of us, Evelyn's are the book I have and it's on my to read list that I'm on hold for the audio and the ebook. And I'll see if we have a physical copy here. But I like historical books, so that already got my attention for it. And I, I didn't even, I was like, yeah, whatever, Long Island. Like, that wasn't what drew me in. But I know it'll draw a lot of people. And we had a lot of patrons come in that remembered the time period. Some of them were alive then. And some of them, like, to go out and enjoy themselves. And I'm someone who's been to, like, Montauk once that I remember. Went to Lighthouse. And I don't remember anything else. And I, d I now want to go back there and see, like, I want to read the book, and I want to go back. I'm like, what's still here? What can... I really want to go to the Montauk Manor because it looks beautiful in photos. We'll see if I will afford a night there. But it just seems, like, really cool to maybe be like, oh, I'll live, like, you know, the high life, like what <laughs> Beatrice and friends. Yeah, and you make a lot of references to places. I've been out to Montauk quite often, and you make a lot of references to great places that are still out there, like Jurier's and Gurney's. And yeah. You mentioned the surf club, which I'm sure it's a different surf club than it was back then. Yeah. <laughs> White's the Pharmacy. White's Pharmacy, the Yacht Club. The Yacht Club. I stayed there quite yeah. often. Yep, yeah. It was <laughs> great. Yeah, so all of those places were around back then in the 30s. And, um, Did the yachts actually come and stay at the Yacht Club? Yeah, they <laughs> actually <laughs> built a whole right. extra area for to make more space for the for the boats to come in. Yeah. Um, so it is kind of cool that you can still go out to Montauk now and those places are still around and they still have this you know, history to them. You just have to kind of know where to look. <laughs> <laughs> right. And how about telling a little bit about the book? 
Yeah, so the book um, takes place in 1938, the summer of 1938, and it follows the story of Beatrice Bordeaux, who uh, comes from a modest background, but she married um, a wealthy husband. And she stays at the Montauk Manor for the summer with um, the other high society wives when all the husbands go back and forth to the city during the week. And um, so, but instead of getting in with these with these fancy ladies, <laughs> these high society women, like her husband wanted her to, because it was going to help his business uh, further his like business interests. Um, instead of that, she finds herself drawn to the locals, the Montauk locals, um, and she kind of gets involved with and gets her, you know, it gets entwined in their lives, and then um, some complications unfold as the summer goes on. <laughs> Great relationships. Lots yeah. of good, juicy stuff going yeah. on there. <laughs> Which is, like, like, that makes me think of, because at first I was just thinking of, like, Beatrice Williams as a read alike because she does historical stuff, and I feel like she focuses on, like, an area. But I'm just thinking, like, with talking about, like, the locals versus the people that come for summer or even just weekends. And that makes me think of, like, Elon Hildebrand and Nantucket. Yeah. But I'm just like, oh, like, I wonder, like... Because the, the relationships between those of the locals versus the rich. Yeah. But just even thinking of even in modern day novels that you have still people will go out for the summer, but those work and come back during the week, come back on the weekend. Mm -hmm. Like I read that in books now and I'm like, that'd be nice. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I don't have that money, but that'd be interesting to be like, oh, okay. Well, it's interesting to see people doing that now because I see, you know, when school gets out, the moms oh, and yeah. the kids, they go out to Montauk and or out to the Hamptons and they stay mm -hmm. there. And it's and you know the husbands go back and forth. <laughs> and it's I just found it so interesting that they were doing that back in the 30s. Yeah. Well, yeah. they had escaped the hot city. The there hot really city. wasn't air conditioning. Right, no air conditioning. There. And, no. You know, hot, stinky. <laughs> <laughs> like get out of the You, want, you want the escape. fresh air. Right. You want the scenic view. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah you really the ocean breeze and the sound of the ocean puts you to sleep. It's just yeah. so nice. <laughs> Wonderful place to be. Yeah, it really is. And they all took the train. Very few people drove back in the day. Yeah, they all took the train. Um, that was kind of the way to get out there. And um, the guy Carl Fisher that I mentioned, who um, developed Miami and then Montauk, he his whole PR campaign was Miami in the winter, Montauk in the summer. And Sounds good he, to me. Yeah, right. <laughs> and he had, um, you know, he had posters up all over town and on the trains, and telling people this is where you should be summering and. Yeah, so it was a whole thing. <laughs> I'm, like, trying to imagine living that. Because I also like the fashion of, like, I should say, like, the higher society of that time. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just going to, like, I'm thinking, like, Downton Abbey, which is not even that time. It's a bit earlier. But just, like, the different stuff that they wore. And, like, reading about you, like, you have a background in fashion. Yeah. That Did that appeal to you? And you're like, oh, like... Yeah, so I have a um, fashion journalism background. I used to be a style writer for Forbes, and I used to have a column for Lucky. So, you know, any chance I get to write about fashion, <laughs> especially, you know, in the 30s, or um, and for my next book I'm writing about the 20s, um, you know, that's really fun just to delve into that. It's a good uh, excuse to do some research. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do, like, a ton, a ton of research, or you knew, like, some of the stuff that you wrote about because you had a house there? Yeah, I knew some of it. Um, but I also did a pretty decent amount of research as well. Um, you know, I started out at the Montauk Library, mm -hmm. just sort of poring over their uh, local history books and just getting a sense of what was going on at that time and what it looked like and, and you know, getting to know some of the local characters of the time. And then I did um, a tour of the lighthouse. The lighthouse is a big part of this book. Um, so I did a tour of the lighthouse with a, with a local historian. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, um, but one of the most fun parts of my research was I got put in touch with um, a couple who had lived in Montauk their whole entire lives and I think they went to high school in East Hampton and then they ended up getting married when they were 16 or 17 and so I spent the afternoon with them at their house actually they live next Julianne Moore has a house next door to oh, oh wow very you know, modest <laughs> home it's not some huge mansion but he told me that he's like my next door neighbor is Julianne Moore <laughs> um <laughs> But it was really great spending the afternoon talking with them because they told me about what it was like growing up there. And then they, he, he said he remembered what it was like when all the summer visitors started coming. Oh, wow. And, you know, they wanted him and his friends would, you know, to make a few extra bucks here and there. They would go to the 
to, to sort of be the entertainment for the summer visitors. And um, they would do things <laughs> like um, climb into a potato sack <laughs> and then have their friend tie them up and throw them to the bottom of the swimming pool. And everyone would time how long it would take for them to rise to the top of the swimming pool, which sounds a little bit dangerous to yeah, me. Yeah, I, I would think that. But I'm also trying to think how, like, did... I get, yeah, they did have watches back then. So I'm like, how are you counting how long <laughs> yeah. it takes? You don't have a stopwatch on your and then smartphone. You, you also told us about the other episodes. Oh, the, yeah, uh, yeah, the, 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 the greasy pig. The other thing, yeah, the, the, uh, the greasy pig contest. They would, they would put on these greasy pig contests. And so they would oil up a pig, and these young guys would just <laughs> chase this pig around until someone found, <laughs> until someone caught it. And, uh, you know, they'd get paid some prize money. And it also, but it probably helped with the economy out there because during the summer, that's probably when everybody made their money. Exactly. Except yeah. for the fishermen, yeah. which was all year round. Right, exactly. That really helped Definitely out boosted yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. And I can Montal. imagine that it could somewhat have resentment of the locals versus the summer right. people. Right. But that's why like, I think this book, it would be really good for book discussions because you could talk about that. You could talk about like the time period you could talk about the storm that happens you, like there's so much you could talk about especially the relationships between the main um the protagonist Beatrice and her husband like the friends that she makes like yeah. she's a, she seems like a very interesting person because yeah. i i kind of like that she seems from what i've briefly read of the summaries and like one or two reviews is that she it kind of rebels against what they want her to do. And I'm like, oh, I like that. Like, you go, yep. Beatrice. Yeah. <laughs> yep. She's strong. She's a strong woman. She's strong by <laughs> the end, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> she puts up with a lot of stuff. Yeah. That's all I'm going <laughs> to say. I'm not going to. No not going to give it away, <laughs> that's for sure. Evelyn would like everyone to read this book <laughs> so you find out everything that happened. Yeah. Lots of good stuff. Lots of juice. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoyed it. I like Dottie. Dolly. 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 Yeah. Dolly. Dolly. I, I love Dolly when yeah. I was so writing So who's going to play Dolly in a movie? What do we think? Oh, well, <laughs> you know. We could. Uh, I, I like to play that game. I like okay. to cast like my characters. Okay, so Dolly would so be who? So I think Reese Witherspoon would be a good Dolly. Oh, I think Reese Witherspoon would be a great <laughs> Dolly. <laughs> she, she, yes. I See, I'm not going to be good at this because I didn't read it. Okay. I'll just be like, uh, so maybe this Beatrice. person? Beatrice, I, I envision... Um, Brie Larson playing Beatrice. I like her. Yeah. yeah, she's very good. I like her a lot. And um, okay, Thomas. I like Chris Pine for Thomas. Love oh. Chris Pine. Right. Can you imagine if it's a little, little bit so rugged? So rugged. good looking, Chris Pine. <laughs> That's why people call him Chris Fine. Oh, they do. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, I like that, <laughs> Chris Fine. <laughs> and what about Harry? Lovely well, Harry man. needs to be a little bit more slick. Yeah, he's not a nice guy. No. Um, <laughs> I'm not. So I'm not liking Harry too I've much. I've forgotten the name of the guy who's married to Blake, Blake Lively. Ryan Reynolds. Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, he could do that. Like I'm used to him playing like the he's goofy kind of. He's usually a nice. He usually yeah. a nice, good guy, but he could play kind of the a bit of a bad guy. <laughs> okay, we'll take that. <laughs> if anyone's listening, is this being made into a movie? Is that an option? Um, well, that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I do actually have um, a film agent. So I guess it's getting shopped around right now. Oh, that's yeah, really cool. That's very exciting. I don't really know what that means. Right. <laughs> well, I hope if they do it, they film it out in Montauk. Uh, that would be yeah. very nice. I hope so. To be real, the well, actual Well, they'll, they'll try to be as real as they can, but they'll probably film it yeah. on other places, especially th- Long Island. That will have scenic something. Because just, um, oh, my God, where was it? I was, this is years ago uh, when Gossip Girl was on TV. They would film, like, stuff in the Hamptons, mm-hmm. but they were, like, filming at Roslyn. Like, yes. depending on what, like, fits their idea of the picture. Yes. And also, you know, the budget and things yeah, like that. Yeah, like, can, yeah. You, can you do this? There. Yeah. But, um, but as the author, I feel like it should be all filmed <laughs> right. to keep it of true course. to the story. Absolutely. <laughs> and you've got to be, be on good. set the yes. whole time. Be like, like I need to see it. <laughs> a nice little condo to rent on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> Would you write a screenplay for it or have, like, a screenwriter? If that is that are is that what they're called? Yeah, screen <laughs> screenwriter. Yeah. So I would write. I would like to take a stab at writing a screenplay. Of oh it. Wow. You know, I mean, I think usually they end up hiring an outside screenwriter. Mm-hmm. But you know, you think about it. I know the characters. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I you know created the story them. Pretty you well. these create these characters. <laughs> so I, I could at least give it a shot and see. I think that would be fun. Yeah, well sounds we interesting. So. That would be wonderful. Yeah. I would really love that. Any any producers or <laughs> film people <laughs> this is an uh, this is a good one and so y- you're working on a n- 
I was about to say new novel. It's not new. You're working on another novel. Yes. Yes, I'm working on another novel in my second book. Um, and this one is going to be set in the 20s. And it takes place in New York City and in the Adirondacks. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun writing that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you've stayed up in the Adirondacks? Yeah, I've stayed there. I've actually gone out there a couple times for research. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, not bad. Not bad. Um, and I've stayed at this place called White Pines Camp, um, which is right oh. on the water. And th the reason this um, that I became interested in this topic is I wrote an article for a travel magazine, um, I don't know, like a couple of years ago. And I, I learned about these great camps that they had up in the Adirondacks that like the Vanderbilts would, would have. Um, and they called them like these rustic lodges, and then you go up and see them, and they're they're not rustic at all. They're these huge compounds with <laughs> you know, a boathouse and a bowling alley, and you know tennis courts, and uh, they're just amazing wow. places. And so that kind of piqued my interest. I started. Uh, that's where the, the story fact started. that they're like, oh, we're just going up to the lodge, yeah. like. And no, they'd go still a giant house. Yeah. Are that's your characters true. Vanderbilt and? No, no, okay. they're fictional. Actually, one of them is a Ziegfeld girl. Oh, okay. Yeah, the show girl. So, she's a lot of fun. She's very <laughs> different from Beatrice. <laughs> very nice. Is it gonna take place like over summer or like year round type it's thing? It's gonna um, take place over a couple different summers. Oh, mm -hmm. that that sounds interesting. Yeah. Ooh, I like this. Yeah, because in the winter that's not the place you want to no, be. No, it's <laughs> pretty cold. No. Yeah, unless you ski. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm not yeah. a person that does that. <laughs> not that I'm against it. I I just don't know how to ski. But to think up there, because like mostly people don't go up there right. for. I mean, maybe fall at most. I'm like trying to think. Um, my like one side of my family, like their other side of the family, the ones that I'm not are actually really to like. They have like houses up there, and they'll sometimes go like for a weekend. And I'm like, that sounds nice. Yeah, you can invite me. <laughs> um. But it's it's interesting to like be there. I remember going to camp upstate right. or right. Pennsylvania ish yeah. area, but that wasn't a fancy lodge. That was like, you know, <laughs> you're in a bunk. <laughs> <laughs> that is Enjoy. true. But there are fancy camps up there too. Yeah. They yeah, well they have they have all that I mean, even now for adults they have camps. Mm -hmm. For adults you could, you know, live back of the night where it like the whole glamping oh, yeah. of fancy camping exactly. and I'm like yeah there's a, just like there's a touch of glamping in this new book <laughs> <laughs> like I, I could imagine with if they're going up to these like big areas about the Rockefeller Vanderbilt's like those type of houses with all all that you can imagine right exactly there must have been you know a whole staff just living there to take care yes. of them oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, yep and to be there when they're you know getting prepared for when they arrive right. yeah, yeah. Well, they, that's don't, they don't have to go to the local Wegmans <laughs> to do their food shopping over right. there. No, but back in the day, like, if you were wealthy, you had, you know, you had multiple caretakers, houses or right. something. You had caretakers right. to do this. Like, oh, like, I've got to bring up d Downton Abbey because that's the closest thing I could think of right now because I know I've been talking about it with my mom. Is that, you know, they have their country large estate, mm -hmm. Downton Abbey, and then they go, you know, for the summer, they'll summer in London at their apartment and they have staff and caretakers there mm -hmm. and like some people are still back at the you know large estate and yep. i'm like it's a lot of people yeah. to take care of yeah. no i love delving into that whole world of you know yeah. you know upstairs downstairs type of thing is it just fun for me it's <laughs> definitely interesting because you're like wow like just seeing like how some of them lived i like that you get to see the the sides from i guess like both sides of the staircase, yeah. the upstairs and downstairs, you know, the fabulously wealthy and then the people that worked for them and did all the hard work. Right. It's crazy. Yeah. I'm very excited for the movie that I, it's unrelated to this book, but <laughs> it just because the, the royal family is coming in the movie and it's like, oh, no, now you've got the royal family staff taking over. <laughs> like, there's, you know, bad blood between that or whatnot. I don't even know because the movie's not out yet, but it just makes me kind of wonder, like, about even in Montauk or your next book, like, you know, there's tensions and yeah. whatnot. Mm -hmm. Exciting to read. <laughs> but yeah. So when you're writing the book, how many hours a day do you usually spend writing? It depends. Um, I, you know, like sometimes it's three hours, sometimes it's six hours. Um, I have a, a workspace that I work out of called a writer's room, and it's a big loft space. Um, all just desks, and it's it's all writers who go there to write, and it's totally oh silent. Wow. Totally silent. So um, 
you know, you hear people tapping away on their keyboards, <laughs> but that's about it. And so I get so much more work done there than I do trying to work at home. Um, but then again, I have a five-month-old at home, so oh. <laughs> I, I have to escape the house to get my writing done. Right, he doesn't yeah. understand what mommy does yet for a No. <laughs> and do you write full-time? Um, I'm starting to write full time. <laughs> yes. Um, I also have a personal styling business. Um, but I hired some more stylists who are working with me on that so that <laughs> I can spend more time writing, yeah. which is what I love to do. Well, it's exciting. Yeah. We're, we're excited to see what the future brings for it. And when you start writing a book, whether it's this one or the one that you're working on, do you go in knowing that like you also want it to be an audio book? Or that just is kind of like after everything's done. Yeah, that's after everything's done. I didn't even, you know, know about that <laughs> until <laughs> I wrote the book and I sent it to the publisher and it went through its edits and then they said, oh, okay, and now they're going to, you know, turn it into an audio book and I, they had me go in and um, do like a Q&A mm -hmm. for the end of the audio book. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that was fun. Um, but it's, it's a trip. It's, it's funny to hear uh, somebody else and – the narrator did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. Her name's Erin Bennett, and she she reads a lot of like Elon Hildebrand's books. Okay. Um, it's, but it's still really weird to hear somebody <laughs> else reading the characters' voices, and uh, you know, it's it's great, it's wonderful, but it's <laughs> strange at the same time. <laughs> you know, those voices have been in my I head. I can only long imagine because like this is who you're envisioning, and maybe like it, you don't know if they're gonna get like if they have an accent or something. Right. Like, oh no, that's their affectation. Yeah. It's like, because um, you have, there's the cover of the book that you have, and then the advanced readers has the separate one. Yeah, it's a different cover. And it, like, the feeling that you'll get from it, you could also get, you know, I, a lot of people who are audiobook fans are like, no, the narrator brings, you know, emotion and yeah, feeling into it because they're narrating it. So yeah, it's I mean, they're essentially, you know, an actor or an actress. Yeah. So right. they really, this is, this is what they do. They know how to do it well. Well, I listened and I read, and she did a beautiful job. Yeah. It was really very good. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, nice. I have to say, I enjoyed it. Oh, well, I'm on hold for both, so we'll okay. see what I get first. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds good. <laughs> and then do you have any advice for aspiring writers? I do, yes. I think what's been most helpful for me is having um, being part of a community of other writers. Mm -hmm. And I'm in a writing workshop. Um, we meet once a week every Thursday. Oh, wow. There's about seven of us. Mm -hmm. And we show up with um, with seven pages, oh. and we just read. And it can, I mean, some of us are like, we've just finished this today. So it can be very, oh very wow. raw and rough. And you just read it out loud, and they listen, and they just tell us, you tell you, you know, their gut instinct about it. If it's working, it's not working. I like this, I don't like that. And it's very just honest, <laughs> huh? And yeah. And, um, you know, we've been together for many years now, so <laughs> now we're, like, almost too honest. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, uh, but it's fantastic. And uh, just that accountability of knowing that, like, every Thursday I'm going to show up with these pages really, like, has kept me on track. So I think my advice for mm -hmm. any writer is just find find a group of people who are writing or want to write and have a weekly deadline that you don't, you know, that you, that you stick to. That's good advice. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else have their books published in your group? Yeah, so the person who leads the writing workshop, her name is Jennifer Bell. So she has a bunch of um, women's oh fiction wow. books, um, High Maintenance, Going Down, mm. those books. Um, and then the others are, um, they are, you know, on their way. Okay, good. So yeah. <laughs> some published authors. They too. must have been so proud of you. When yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. They've been out. great. They've been coming to, you know, my book launch. And oh, that's so nice. Me, so that's nice. Yeah. Have you been out to Montauk with the book? I'm going on Friday. Oh, oh wow. Nice. Yes, oh, yes, fun I'm going. Is there a bookstore summer. out there now? Yeah. Well, um, you know, I think that the small bookstore that was out there, I think it closed. Uh, okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, but I'm doing a reading at um, Bookhampton. Oh, okay. In okay. Very nice. On Thursday. And then on Friday. Oh, I'm you should get a great turnout for that. Yeah. So. Yeah. And then on Friday. Wish I'll I be could go, too. <laughs> 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 and then on Friday, I'll be at the uh, the Montauk Library. Oh, that's oh, so well, great. That's nice nice to go that's to really library. where I did a lot of my initial research. Oh, that's yeah, that, that'll be nice to connect with, like, the patrons and just be like, no, like, you guys helped me a lot. Yeah. Because it's, it's like so authentic. It's it's so yeah. Montauk. So it's, it's Montauk. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. Yeah, it's yeah, so that'll great. Be fun. Oh, that's cool. Are you reading anything that you're loving now? Um, I am. I'm actually read. I'm listening to um, Jamie Brenner's uh, Drawing Home. Oh. It's a new book that just came out, and it's set in Sag Harbor. 
Okay. Oh, nice. Oh, close so, by. yeah, it's present yeah. day. Like, it's not historical fiction, but it, that's kind of oh, fun. Oh, that's too. cool. That's well, it's fun. I've only been to Sag Harbor once, even though all the times I've been out there, we've only went there once. No, they have, a, they have a cute town. Yeah, yeah it was very, very cute. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, not on the ocean, though, right? No. Well, not on the ocean side, but that's yeah. the, right. the sound. Right. Yeah. You have that, and then pretty. there's like little ponds yeah. and whatnot you could go. Because I used to go to a friend's family's house, and you'd have to beware of snapping turtles in the pond. Right. Didn't pay attention when I was younger. Now I'd be like, I'm not going in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need the animals attacking. Yeah. But no, it's it's nice to do that, and like, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. No, so I'll put that on my to read list yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> my Goodreads list is growing. So far, I'm enjoying that. I just um. I just read The Subway Girls by Susie Orman Schnall. Oh. Um, it's about the, uh, um, the the Miss Subway's contest that took place in the 40s. Oh, wow. That was a fun, that was a fun one. I don't know anything about that. I okay. didn't know that that <laughs> even, like, occurred. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but that's really cool. Yeah. Subway. Yeah. You've been living in Manhattan for a while now? Uh, yes, I've been living in Manhattan for a long time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, how many years? Maybe 20 years. Oh, oh wow. wow. Okay. It's a long time. No, less. Less. Maybe we're, like, 16. Yeah, I love Manhattan. I mean, there's I feel like you can come to New York and uh, become anything. <laughs> right, <laughs> that's true. There's so many possibilities. But I like that because, especially for like living in the city like Manhattan, like you're, you could go upstate, you could go to Long Island, yep. you could fly out and go somewhere. It's a it's a good transportation hub. You yeah. can go to Montauk. Yeah. <laughs> you could. You could. Great place to be. No doubt yeah. about it. Well, this is definitely a good beach read. Not even just, I say that because it's June as we're talking, mm-hmm. but I'd say just even a good read, not even not even for the beach. You could, you know, you could be on the train, <laughs> plane, mm-hmm. automobile, any <laughs> any of the above because with the different formats because there's, you know, reading it on a Kindle or listening to it, which is really cool that you have the availability in formats. Yeah. Yeah, that's exciting. So we want to thank you for coming. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. This has been fun. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) So we're going to close the chapter of this podcast. And we'll see you again. Yeah, when your your next book book. comes out. Okay, that would be great. (laughs) Your your untitled project. But we're going to close the chapter. This is Stacy. Evelyn. Nicola Harrison. And signing off. It's time to close this chapter of Turn the Page. Join us for the next episode. (laughs) 